Dawn. I'm an avid horsewoman and I've been riding my whole life. I'm here to introduce True Partnership, the McChesney Method with Erin McChesney. Horses are fascinating and complex creatures. So whether at home or away from home with your horses, it's important to know certain procedures with your horses and the correct way of dealing with them. That's where Erin comes in. She's been training horses for over 40 years and has her own clinics and training programs. She discusses topics that all equestrians can benefit from. I'm Dawn Kerr, and I hope you enjoy True Partnership, The McChesney Method with Erin McChesney. My name is Erin McChesney and today we're going to be talking about trailering and tying your horse to the trailer for a few hours up to a few days. So when we have horses we're going to trailer them out for any number of reasons. It might be that we're going to go see the veterinarian, we're going to go to ride with some friends and meet them at a trailhead, or we're going to go to a horse show or a clinic and be there for several days or sometimes just several hours. So we're gonna talk about the things that we would bring for our horses to include and to help them to have things to eat, to keep them busy, and also to take care of them when we have them tied to the trailer. So let's start here. These are feed pans, they're low feed pans. And these we would set at the bottom of the, the trailer here for the horses to eat out of, for grain or bran mash, things of that nature. Then you have a hay bag they have a lot of different types of hay bags. This particular one is a mesh material and breathes really, really well. Um, and that's kind of a nice option because when the horses stick their noses down inside the hay bag, they still have a fair amount of good air circulation in the bottom of that. Another option is what was called a hay net. So I'm going to show you a couple of different hay nets, different sizes, and talk to you a little bit about these as well, and then show you how to load them. Then we have a bucket for water. We have a smaller bucket that you can use to transfer water into this once it's tied, so that we don't have to take the bucket up and down every time that we need to refill it. And then this is actually a repurposed portable dog tub and it's plastic and, and fabric and it can be folded down flat and some horses it's nice to put their hay in that and let them eat from there. So let's start and talk about the hay bag first. So the hay bag's easy to load. Just unclip the top, put your hay in the middle and you're good to go. Very simple and it has a second strap that we can use to put up on the trailer. And it just hangs there when you need to reload it, take it down, put more hay in, or you can unclip this if you like and load hay in it from the top while your horse is tied. That's a really simple option. A lot of people like hay bags. They come in a lot of varieties. Then we have a hay net. So a hay net holds more hay than a hay bag does. And it's really easy because the openings are very, very large for the horses to get hay out of them. So these are a really nice option for um, putting a fairly large amount of hay together for your horses to eat from and also letting them have easy access to it. The problem with the hay net is that it will drop hay onto the ground. So the horses need to be tied in a way that they can also reach the hay on the ground that's going to fall out of it. But if you're at an event or a ride or endurance ride or three-day event um, or NATRC ride or even horse camping when it's going to rain, the hay net is kind of a good option over a hay bag because if it gets wet, the rain will go through it and in here it tends to collect and become a little bit of a problem. So your hay net is simply tied off up at the top. Now we'll show you how that's going to be once it has hay in it. But I want to show you 
something about hay nets that it's really important. This is a much larger hay net, big cotton hay net that'll hold three or four flakes of hay. Really super option overnight. But we'll notice how long this string is that allows us to open it up. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we need all that room in order to load the hay in there. But this extra rope presents a safety issue that we have to be aware of when we're tying a hay bag up. When I tie this hay bag off and leave it like this, I've got all this extra rope here that I have to be thinking about. I usually just continue on making my loops, my safety loops for a, a pull tie or a slip, slip knot and try to get that out of the way as much as possible. But I'm also going to be using this if this hay bag is really, really full and I'm going to be using it overnight for one or two horses. But we want to be aware that this one hangs lower. If I tie this hay net too low because it's really full, you'll see when we fill it up. If I tie it when it's really full and then crawl in my horse trailer or crawl in my living quarter or sleep in the bed of my truck overnight and leave this in the morning, this is going to be hanging very, very low. And I've seen horses in the 40 years I've been around them actually wake up in the morning and somebody's horse's foot is hanging or their leg is through the hay net. Um, most horses that have been camped with a lot can handle a lot, but it's still a safety hazard, something to think about. So we're going to talk about what these look like when they're full and how to tie them up so that they're safe. So let's load these hay nets up. I have heard a litany of complaints from people about hay bags and hay nets. They're like, oh, they're so hard to use. You can't load them. They're impossible. And they can be really troubling. So I showed you earlier how long this rope is where the pull rings are at the end of the hay bag. So we open this thing up as much as we possibly can. So it's a nice big opening. Then reach in and grab the bottom of the hay net and put it over your arm like that. So you've got your whole hay net loaded up over your arm. The string's nice and open and you can always stretch it a little more if you need to. Take whatever hay you're going to put and stand it on end. Put your hand on the middle of the hay. Drop the hay net over the top. Make sure it's all the way down to the bottom. Then we just tip it over, grab our rope, flip it upside down, and voila, your hay net is loaded. Takes zero time. So I'll show you that one more time with the smaller hay net. This one has about four flakes in it. That's a great option overnight, especially if you don't want to get up at three in the morning and give your horse some hay. Same thing, we're going to open it up as wide as we can, put it up on our shoulder, find that center ring. This one has a little ring on the bottom. The cotton ones generally don't just have like a cotton ring at the bottom. Bring this thing down all the way on the sides, flip it over, and there you go. Easy as pie. So we can see now with this hay net versus the hay bag how much more openings there are for the horses to eat from. But again, there's going to be a lot of hay that's going to end up on the ground from a hay net versus a hay bag. But you can get a lot more in here and if there's more than one horse eating from this, they can eat from either side and they're not competing for this one little opening um, to chew through. So now we're going to tie this up. You can go through any part of the hay net to make your loop. I always tie this with a slip knot or quick release and now my hay net is up nice and high. So when this is empty, it'll come down to about here. These smaller hay bags are pretty safe if they're empty. 
So we don't have to worry about that too much. We can leave that overnight. So now let's tie up the big one, which helps if you have really strong arms. So this one's got almost four flakes of hay in it. Oh, this is super fun. There you go. So remember before I was talking about how much extra rope I have? So I'm gonna need that extra rope because now I can't tie the top of the hay bag as high as I had it and as tight up on the top as when it was empty. Which means when this, has, this bag is empty, it's gonna hang down to here and now I've got a safety hazard because my horse could get their foot inside of that hay bag. So to start with, I'm just gonna go around the hay net up on top to kind of hold it in place. And I'm gonna look for a loop down on the bottom, take my extra rope, and get this guy out of the way. I'm gonna take that extra rope, I'm gonna come back over here, and pull it up, much as I can, put my safety slip knots in place, and now this hay bag, empty, is only going to come down to about here. And I can go to sleep tonight and I don't have to get up at 3 in the morning at an endurance ride to refill my hay bag. And there's lots and lots of hay in there. So the other thing to keep in mind is that when we are at an endurance ride, horse camping or NATRC ride or three-day event if we're trailer camping at a three-day event, the horses need to eat. They're out of their normal environment. They're oftentimes nervous, paying attention to other things. It's really important that they eat. So this is like a giant bag of Lay's potato chips or if somebody's into like M&Ms or whatever, whatever their stress food is, this is a great option to keep a horse nice and relaxed so that he can eat the whole time that he's there, which means that he'll be more calm and his system will be better and he's less likely to get a stress colic from being away from home. This is entirely too much hay, of course, to take for a ride if you're gonna be gone only for a couple of hours. If we're just gonna be gone for a couple of hours, we would either use a hay bag with a single flake in it or a smaller hay net with only a flake or two in it or maybe even some kind of a feed pan or something of that nature that's collapsible that has a little bit of hay in it. So that's the first step we have about talking about hay and how to tie this up so that it's safe for the horses and the quick and easy way to use a hay net so that it doesn't frustrate you. All right, so let's talk about what we do with our water bucket. If we put a water bucket down on the ground, if you've just come back from a trail ride and you're not gonna be there very long and you put water in your bucket and it's down low and your horse can drink out of it, you're probably fine, don't need to worry about it. And if you're at a horse show and you're afraid the horse is gonna kick the bucket over and make a muddy mess next to your trailer, then it's okay to have your bucket loose, offer the horse water, take the bucket and move it out of the way where they can't get to it and bring it back as needed. But if we're gonna leave it tied to our trailer, we want to use something like a piece of hay twine or even a tie strap. You don't wanna use a bungee cord. Here's why. I put this bungee cord on here. So the first problem that I have is that if it gets lightweight, you saw that that hook already came off. So now this isn't attached anymore. It's not secure to the trailer. Plus these hooks on the bungee cord are very easy for the horse to hook their halter in. And if a horse hooks his halter on this and pulls back and the bucket of water comes towards him, it's gonna go badly. The other problem is when this thing has water in it, it hangs way down here, which seems terrific until you get up earlier in the early morning hours to feed your horse at a ride and this thing is way up here and now you're trying to heave water up over your shoulders to put water in there. So it's not safe to use a bungee cord. It's too flexible and unpredictable and it has hooks 
that the horse can get caught on, which will end badly. We do, however, have handy dandy baling twine. Everybody's got baling twine. I just make a loop, go like that, bring it up here, tie this on, whatever height I need it to be. Maybe I've got a really tall horse. Maybe I have a really short horse or a pony. So I can adjust whatever size I need on here. Do my slip knot. The other thing to keep in mind is with all these things tied to your trailer, even these with the strap, you should always have a pocket knife handy. Because if your horse gets hung up in any of this, the quickest and simplest solution is to take your pocket knife and just cut whatever it is that they're hung up on and go from there. So now my bucket's nice and secure. It's not gonna stretch down, get lower, um, and there's nothing my horse can get caught on aside from getting their rope underneath of that, but that could happen with anything. So that's really quick and simple. There's a ton of these things available to use. These um, baling twine is everywhere. You can adjust the height however you like um, and go from there. So those are different ways to put feed in front of your horses. So the next thing we're gonna do is bring out a couple horses so you can see how to tie them for these different designs and talk about the difference between a short tie or a higher tie for a shorter type of event and a longer tie if you want your horse to have extended hours at the side of their trailer or even overnight. Today we're going to talk about tying our horse to the trailer with a short tie and a long tie because sometimes we are just tying our horses for a few minutes or maybe an hour or two to go to the vet or to go riding or at a horse show or a clinic. Other times we're tying them for overnight because we're at an endurance ride or an NATRC ride or maybe we're going horse camping. This is Chevouche. She's a 26-year-old Anglo-Arab. And the other horse behind me is Stoika. She's a 7-year-old Arabian. So let's start here with our short tie. I like to use a boland, and I'll show you why that is after I tie this knot. And I like a long cotton rope, 8 or 10 feet long. So I do an overhand loop. I bring another loop into that one, a second loop into that one, and then I lock my knot, and I pull it tight. With the boland tie, if she pulls back and this rope gets really tight and this knot gets really tight, I can still take a pocket knife and get up into here to cut this rope to get her loose. And that's a really important safety feature. You should always have a pocket knife either on you or in your horse trailer. Plus, cutting a cotton rope is easier than cutting a nylon rope. The nylon ropes, when they get older and get really dirty, they're almost like trying to cut a piece of steel. Cotton rope is always a better option for that. There's a different kind of tie that a lot of people use that's also a slip knot tie, but it has a little bit of a problem. This one you just pull a loop up into your rope, do that a few times, kind of like crocheting, and then you lock your line. Here's what happens. When she pulls back on this rope, that knot becomes very tight up against whatever I've tied to, whether I'm on the ring or the post. And if she's pulling back and fighting, I'm going to have to try to cut this rope where she is. So in the middle of her being frantic, I'm going to be trying to get to that spot. Whereas the other one, I can cut either by being next to my trailer or even from inside my trailer. This one, I won't be able to do that as successfully. So both of them are slip knots. So the Boland overhand loop. Bring the rope up once, bring the rope up twice, and go like this. This is also a slip knot. I unlock my line, boom, horse is loose. But I like this one better because it gives you an extra safety option in the event your horse panics or gets spooked by something and you need to cut that line in an emergency. So the length of rope that she's at right now is perfect if I'm getting ready to saddle for a ride or a show or a clinic, or I'm waiting for the vet or something like that. But she can't reach her feed. So if I want to give her a snack, and I go, here, Chevy, 
have a snack. She's like, oh, that's mean. I can't reach it. So now I've got a problem. Heads up, baby. Back up. So I need to make this rope long enough that she can reach her food. So let's talk about what that is. In order to tie your horse with a longer line, you obviously need a longer lead rope. I suggest a 10 or 12 foot cotton lead rope. So I'm going to make a guess as to what the length should be. I'm going to do my Boland. I'm going to tighten the knot up a little bit. Now I need to see if she can reach the ground. I'm going to hang on to her halter here. I'm going to unclip her and I'm going to hang this line down. If the bottom of my snap is three to five inches from the ground, it's the right length for her to be able to reach her feed. So that's an appropriate length for her to reach her feed. If I think, oh, I think she needs more room, I'm going to make this rope really long to where I can barely even tie my knot. And then I unclip her and my rope is in the dirt, now I've created a safety hazard. Because she can very easily reach forward with a front leg and get her leg over that rope. Or, worse yet, she could hook it underneath my fender and now she's going to pull up from here and be panicking about that. So I have to make sure that the length of my rope is exactly what I need it to be so the horse can be safe. So let's see how this is. And don't be discouraged if you have to tie your rope several times, like that's too long, it's almost to the ground. Because that's how we know if we've done it properly. Always snug your knot up just a little bit so that you get a, an accurate sense of how long it is. And there we are, three to five inches from the ground. Perfect length for her to reach her food, and so I'm sure she's happy to show us that's true. And we put the bucket in front of her, and she can easily reach her feed. The rope isn't strained or stretched, and if that was a bucket of water or a feed pan with hay in it, or in this case a little bit of grain, she can easily reach that without having any safety hazards. So here what we've done is we've got both mares, Stoika and Chevy, tied on a shorter tie. This is assuming that we're going for a trail ride or we're at a horse show or something of that nature. We've got their water buckets tied with the hay twine so that it's easy, disposable, doesn't stretch. Um, if they get caught up in it, we can quickly cut it with a pocket knife and move on from there. And there's no water in their buckets right now. We have just have them hanging up for demonstration. Chevy's is behind her, so you can't see it right at the moment. So we're letting these two horses share a hay bag. And I wanted to show you the difference between the horses sharing a hay bag and horses sharing from a hay net. Um, there is a difference in that. And so we kind of want to make that observation of what we're, we're seeing here. So we see that in this hay bag it has two openings, two small openings, and luckily these two mares get along pretty well and they're willing to take turns getting into the hay net. And that's completely fine if the horses are not very hungry, you're not at the end of an endurance ride or a long camping uh, ride that you've done, you've been out on the trail for seven or eight hours and your horses are really famished then they're going to be a little less inclined to be so comfortable with each other and so easy to share. But you can see that it does work. And of course, if we were tying these horses overnight, we would have individual hay bags for them or individual hay nets for them. But sometimes it helps horses to be more settled and more relaxed if they can share their hay with a buddy at the trailer. A lot of times that actually is a real benefit. So let's take a look at this now. I'm going to switch this out and we're going to come right back and I'm going to show you what it looks like for them to be sharing from a hay net instead of a hay bag. So now the horses are sharing from a hay net instead of a hay bag. What you'll notice is that they don't have to compete for either side of the bag, those little holes that were in the hay bag that they can pull from anywhere they like, from the top of the hay net, the bottom, the side, 
and it's easy access for both of them to get to the hay net and to get to the hay. So, of course, Chevy seems to think that I put this hay net up there for her to rub her face on rather than to eat from because that's, that's a fun game to play. Um, but what we want to pay attention to is how much easier it is for them to have access to the hay over an individual hay bag if you were letting your horses share. And that doesn't always work to let them share. Not all horses are interested in that or they would allow that. Or if you have a stallion, you, you're not going to be sharing that hay net or hay bag with other horses. Um, but in the event that we do want to take horses that are familiar with each other and give them an opportunity to have really good access to the hay, the hay net is a really good option um, to have for them to be able to pull hay from anywhere um, from there. But we do have to pay attention to the idea that this hay net is going to get lower and lower and lower as it becomes more empty. And so paying attention to that ahead of time when we tie it up, or if we're going to be around or nearby in about an hour's time, come back and tie the bag up higher so that the horses can um, then still get access to the hay, but not have a safety hazard. The difference with the hay net versus the hay bag, you'll notice though, is the amount of hay that's landing on the ground. And so that's an issue where now you see that she's trying to, Chevy's trying to get to the hay on the ground and she can't reach it. So if I'm going to set these horses up to where they can reach that hay, I need to tie them longer so that they can get to it. But if I tie them longer to get to that hay, I'm going to want to switch to letting them have individual bags or two bags side by side so that my ropes are not too long uh, so the horses can then reach the hay that's on the ground and not have any hazards um, associated with the side of the trailer. That's pretty good, huh girls? Yeah. <laughs>